evidence that volcanic mercury contributed to end Triassic mass extinction. We have mercury emissions from Yellowstone supervolcano geysers even today. Bob Yurka of Fizz.org, and we're going to read from USGS as well what they found. International team of researchers found evidence that mercury from volcanic eruptions played a role in the end Triassic mass extinction. In their paper published in the journal Science Advances, the researchers described their study of plant fossils from 200 million years ago and what they found. The Triassic was a geologic period in Earth's history that began about 250 million years ago and ended about 50 million years later. It was notable because it started and ended with mass extinctions. Prior research shows that the mass extinction that ended the Triassic involved a variety of elements that made life difficult. Volcanoes erupting, global warming, access carbon excess carbon dioxide in atmosphere and acidification of the oceans. It appears there was another factor as well contributing to the Triassic mass extinction, and that's mercury. The researchers note that mercury, which they describe as the most genotoxic element on Earth, and we have this coming out of the geysers in Yellowstone even today, and they're going down the rivers, draining into a nearby lake, Hebgen Lake, where we had the 7.3 earthquake in 1959. Now, the most genotoxic element on Earth, mercury, is released when volcanoes erupt and spew matter into the atmosphere, not just then, but even today. After some period of time, mercury makes its way back to the surface, causing problems. And they found evidence of this phenomenon 200 million years ago, adding to the factors that killed off approximately 40% of land animals and 30% of ocean animals, ocean creatures. To find out if mercury might have been a contributing factor in the huge die-off, the researchers studied plant fossils from that time, and they report evidence of mutations in ancient ferns from that period. They also note that prior studies have shown that there were elevated levels of mercury in soil samples and marine samples from that period as well. And mercury, they noted, does not just kill a plant. It also leads to mutations, and it prevents plants from reproducing. The evidence suggests that mercury likely played a major role in the mass extinction that ended the Triassic. Animals would have died directly due to mercury poisoning and indirectly from lack of food, the plants were dying as well. The researchers suggest it's likely that release of mercury from volcanic eruptions played a large role in four of the five mass extinctions over the past 600 million years that have been associated with volcanic activity. The mercury now from Yellowstone's geysers, according to USGS, this is today, of course, this is what's happening now. USGS scientists sample the water very regularly, they monitor everything. Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming, for dissolved mercury species. And of course, even around Old Faithful, where people just stand by watching everything, uh, these pathways around the park go right through the steam of the geysers. So without knowing it, these people that visit this, these areas are in fact breathing in mercury. So mercury from Yellowstone's geysers, Yellowstone is not as large a source of mercury to the atmosphere as once thought. Although mercury occurs naturally in the hot springs, its most toxic form, methylmercury, appears to be entering the food chain largely by accumulating in slimy microbial mats. Also, the use of mercury isotopes holds promise for an increased understanding of the sources, pathways, and fate of geothermal mercury at Yellowstone. These are some of the findings of a group of U.S. Geological Survey scientists and their colleagues who've been studying the dynamics of mercury in the thermal features of Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. It's not only in Wyoming, it's also in uh, nearby Montana and Idaho. Now, Yellowstone is not as large a source of mercury as once thought, they said. For years, many scientists speculated that Yellowstone 
might have been one of the largest natural mercury emission sources on the planet. To test this assumption, scientists set up the USGS Mobile Atmospheric Mercury Laboratory to measure atmospheric mercury emissions around Yellowstone National Park. Instead, they found that wildfires burning outside the park released appreciably more mercury to the atmosphere than the geothermal sources inside the park. Methyl mercury occurs naturally in the hot springs of Yellowstone. The first data on the chemical forms speciation of mercury in the geothermal springs of Yellowstone confirmed that methyl mercury occurs naturally in many, but not all, of the park's hot springs. Methyl mercury is a very toxic form of mercury that readily bioaccumulates in the food webs and can reach levels that pose health risks to people and animals that eat fish. And we know that a lot of people do go for vacationing in Yellowstone and they even have a number of hotels and motels around Hebgen Lake where people actually go fishing there and eat the fish. And that is one of the most, the heaviest concentrations of methylmercury, mercury in Yellowstone, Hebgen Lake, because they have two rivers uh, uh, emptying in there. Now, the measured concentrations of total mercury and methylmercury were highly variable in both location and time. Microbial mats are a source of methylmercury to food webs. Scientists found that the heat loving thermophilic bacteria that form the microbial mats that are found in many of Yellowstone's geothermal springs bioaccumulate the methylmercury. The scientists also found that larvae feeding on the microbial mats had methylmercury concentrations two to five times higher than the microbial mat concentrations. And this indicates that the microbial mats are an important source of methylmercury to Yellowstone's food web. The mercury isotopes are a potentially promising way to trace mercury sources. The scientists are used, using the ratio of naturally occurring mercury isotopes present in Yellowstone's geothermal waters to trace or identify sources of mercury to the environment. And in many cases, different sources of mercury will have different isotopic ratios. Measuring this ratio in an environmental sample, along with knowledge of the isotopic ratios, that are characteristic of the different sources of mercury has a potential to enable scientists to determine where mercury contamination came from. The results of these studies increase our understanding of the origins, transport, and fate of mercury from Yellowstone's geothermal areas. In addition, new insights have been gained on the relative contribution of natural versus human mercury sources and local versus regional mercury sources Land managers, health professionals, and environmental regulators can use this understanding to develop sound policy regarding the potential exposure of animals and humans to methylmercury. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.